our uh, division, which was the 69th Division, part of the 1st uh, Army, <clears throat> had uh, come up to the banks of the Mulde River. That's about, uh, oh, 25 kilometers uh, west of the Elba River. And uh, we had come up there, oh, about the 21st, I guess, of April. And uh, we, we stopped, and uh, we stayed on the west bank of the uh, Mulde, at M-U-L-D-E, uh, for a couple of days, and then the uh, the Bürgermeister of uh, Wurzen, W U R Z E N, uh, wanted the uh, wanted our division to cross the river and occupy the, his town of Wurzen, um, and so we did that. And at that point, there were. The, the two armies, the Red Army and our army, were coming closer together. Now, we had, did not know where they were. All we knew is that they were somewhere out ahead of us. And they also, we understood later, uh, were did not know where we were, uh, that we were out somewhere ahead of them, in front of them. And uh, so there was the anticipation of... Uh, of meeting uh, Russians, uh, the Soviet Army, the Red Army, and we had instructions. Uh, they were going to do, paint, I think, a white stripe around their tanks and uh, uh, a white star. Uh, there were signals uh, about uh, flare signals, so that we uh, there was, I guess, some concern on higher uh, levels that uh, there might be an unfortunate encounter that uh, we would mistake each other for enemies, and uh, uh, people would be killed and hurt. I'm not sure uh, there was that that really was going to be a possibility, because I think that there was so much anticipation in both armies uh, uh, to see the other that uh, I think that, that everyone was going to be cautious. At any rate, we were there on the banks of the Mold, and uh, there at that time were hordes, hundreds and hundreds of uh, refugees um, of all description, uh, released prisoners, um, escaped prisoners of war, uh, uh, German refugees, uh, uh, what I guess are called slave laborers, uh, uh, now with their freedom were <clears throat> coming into the American lines. And I was an intelligence officer for our battalion, called an S-2, and uh, <clears throat> it was my job to uh, plan for uh, problems like that. And, uh, uh, I don't really mean problems, but make plans for uh, accommodating these uh, uh, refugees. There were released prisoners of war, there were Yanks. Uh, from, I can remember a group that came in uh, uh, of allied uh, uh, prisoners that Included almost all nations of the world. There were Indians, uh, Sikhs uh, with their turbans, uh, uh, black troops from Africa, uh, uh, French, uh, Polish, uh, all uh, all races uh, from this prison camp came in. At any rate, I went out uh, one day to uh, try to count the get a rough idea of how many hundreds were coming into our camp, because we were at the front of the American line, and we had to uh, provide shelter and food, and so we wanted to get some idea of how many were coming in, and I took a jeep with three men and went up and down several roads outside of our town, uh, counting refugees, counting uh, ger surrendering German troops, for that matter, too. Uh, and on one road, we decided we would go up a ways, and we just kept going until we got to uh, Torgau, which was about 25 miles away uh, from our lines. Uh, Torgau is a, a very ancient town sitting uh, on the banks of the, uh, the west bank of the Elbe. And uh, I'm compressing this because this took the better part of half a day to do this. Uh, we had a, s a small amount of trouble. We 
took a few prisoners. Uh, uh, we were not fired on until we got to Torgau. Uh, then there was some scattering, scattered fire. We went across uh, the town after liberating uh, some uh, Allied prisoners at a, at a prison camp in um, Torgau. There were two Americans uh, there. One was uh, an ensign uh, from the American Navy. His name was Peck, and uh, a sergeant. They had been in the OSS and uh, had parachuted uh, behind German lines, had been captured. And they joined our patrol, so now there were six of us, and uh, we uh, took a bed sheet. We fashioned uh, a United States flag with uh, some red uh, powder. We dissolved that in water and with a brush uh, made stripes and then uh, painted one corner blue with some blue powder, and we made a makeshift flag. We uh, climbed a tower uh, at the... Uh, What's the name of the castle now? Hartenfels Castle at the bank of the Elbe, just next to a blown-out bridge, and waved the flag until the Russians fired several times, and then they'd quit, and then they'd fire again, and they didn't believe the, the flag. But we finally uh, encountered a, uh, a Russian POW from the same prison camp there who spoke German and uh, instructed him to tell the his uh, Russian uh, colleagues uh, on the other side of the Elbe River, where they were, that we were Americans and not Germans. And so he shouted across, and then the firing ceased. The Russians stopped shooting at us. And there was still a little sniper fire from the town. And I crawled across the girders of this uh, bridge uh, to meet, and I do not, I think his name was Andreev. He was a sergeant. Uh, uh, in Silvasco's uh, platoon, his rifle platoon. <clears throat> met him up on the girders of the bridge, and then I crawled across to the uh, east bank, and he came over to the west bank where our jeep was. And uh, when another of my men, uh, uh, Corporal Huff, uh, came across with me, and Peck came over, um, his released prisoner. And we uh, met Russians, and... Uh, and I have no recollection of any of their names now, except there were four Russians, including Silvasco, that returned with us uh, in our jeep, went back that evening um, from the Elba to uh, to our lines at Wurzen. And I remember their names. Uh, Silvasco, as I mentioned, was one. It was a, a Major Larianov, uh, uh, Captain... Uh, Uh, Neva, and then this, uh, I think it was the sergeant was there, his name was Andrea. My understanding is that he was later killed in Prague uh, a couple weeks later, just before the war ended. <clears throat> but I remember Silvasco, we saluted each other, we uh, uh, exchanged, uh, oh, there were probably 100, 150 Russians there within a few minutes, and uh, we exchanged cap ornaments and wristwatches and uh, mementos, and uh, we slapped each other on the back and shook hands. And uh, they produced some schnapps, and uh, so we toasted each other and all our leaders. And uh, uh, we had a, a celebration. That uh, it was not very long before someone in the Russian lines uh, appeared who spoke English, and so. We made arrangements for our leaders to meet the following days, and uh, then I left, went back across the river, uh, and our patrol got back in the jeep with the four Russians, and we drove back to Wurzen and to our to our lines. And then that picture that you were talking about, the one with Silvasco and me, was taken that night at our division headquarters. Uh, and then the next day, we guided the uh, uh, our leaders back to Torgau, where the regimental commanders met, and our, uh, General Reinhardt and General Rusikov, and and then the news was out. That sort of summarizes the thing. I've maybe been a little long-winded about it, but I do remember it very well.